most times that I walk in the gym, I see at least half the guys looking at themselves in the mirror, just mm-hmm. doing like this. I mean, does this arm day play with your head? Talk to me about it. Not really. Like, I mean, come to think about it, when it comes to like the bodybuilding in particular, it's all about the definition. So most mm-hmm. people, like, I mean, they are rookie stage. They get used to at the point to like just working on their arms because like hey just from the beginning you want people to see your your arms popping your chest popping but like when we are putting it on preference like most people will prefer arms more than like uh, any other body part so yeah from the rookies i mean from the beginning when they start the gym or they start like uh, working out they get used to working on their arms so much that if you don't even take care, you get to a point like you get used to like doing that's like every day is an arms day or something. So every yeah, day you're just looking at yourself. Guys at a point get obsessed <laughs> working on, <laughs> on their arms or something like. But it's a bit addictive though. Okay. But yeah, um, today you just don't get to go through the process without just working on your arms. You know, you've been working with us for some time now. You know, like you reprioritize all body part. But today is like the key moment to show you how to really work on like a bigger arms. Not just the tricep, not just the bicep, but the arm in whole. You're- I'm just curious about this one thing though. Mm-hmm. You're giving them an exclusive series. Uh-huh. Tell me, <laughs> how many secrets are you going to give them about arms? Because yours are pretty irresistible. I mean, most guys dream of the day they can rip their shirt because their arm is too big. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I just want to know. I'm pretty sure they want to know too. What's the number one thing like you really have to think about if you really want to build a big arm? I mean, it's all about like uh, the time and the tension. Because this is one thing about arm. The care and the movement just doesn't guarantee results. It's painful. It takes you through some um, phase of like, you know, uh, discipline. Okay. But you have to be willing to go through that. You understand? You heard it here yeah. first, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Mm-hmm. I'm really just curious. Mm-hmm. What is your first workout when you move into arm day? Like, what is really most effective for building these kind of arms? Tricep extensions, cables, period. That's what I like to do most of the time. I like to do the push downs. I mean, my first routine when I'm doing arms workout, all okay. right? <sighs> all right. <laughs> wow. One thing I really noticed just watching this his arm. It doesn't go more than 90 degrees. Although he pulled all the way from the top, he stops at 90 degrees and goes right back down. You know, I would say this is isolation, but we're definitely going to have to ask him about this. And you know, one thing I also noticed, he's not doing the double tricep pull down. He's doing a single hand pull down. So we only have to ask, like, is it more effective to do isolations mm-hmm. or is it better to do like a joint? Like why did you choose the isolation? I mean, to a degree, they are all good. Okay. You understand? But if you are talking about preference, I prefer like the single arm pull down more than the double. The single arm, when you're tired, you're tired. So look at what, look at this. Oof. All right. If you see, there is no any extra help from nowhere. It's just me trying to move or pull it all the way down. Okay. 90 degrees, pull it down. 90 degrees, just keep going. Okay. So no any extra help. So is the but, 90 degrees to keep the tension on your tricep? Like, is that how you prevent the extra help? Absolutely. But when you're doing the double, if you take a look at that, double, this, that, the difference is whenever I'm doing the double, when I'm getting tired, I can always lean in, okay, and have an extra push or extra help from the chest. You talked about how you bend over. Uh-huh. Like how you bend over when you get tired. Mm-hmm. You also talked about how you keep 90 degrees to keep the tension and no mm-hmm. help. Uh-huh. So can you really just give us like three or four form tips for somebody uh-huh. who wants to do tricep extensions? Because I so, see so many people reaching high. I see other people that you're right. They're all bent over. So, I mean, the way you do it, you look like a professional. Okay. But for someone out there who really wants to try and do this and build your type of arms, uh-huh. like... What's three tips you really give them to do what seems like a simple exercise, but to do it really correctly? So if you notice, I had to sink in my waist in a bit to get the arch. You understand? That's the perfect form, number one. The second one, when you move it down this way, okay, all I have to do is try to go 90 degrees, push it down. 
but remember we were talking about preference either the isolation or this and i chose the isolation more than this either way whether you do an isolation or double both okay. of them you stop at 90 degrees i stop at 90 degrees but whenever i'm doing the double it's always a chest activation okay. where like it gives me extra help when i'm doing the pull down you have it here guys okay. i asked what's most effective want to build big arms isolate before you, you start will. this next set let me ask you this you just started you did a small workout uh -huh. you did two sets uh -huh. Your veins are already showing. I mean, is this because of the concentration on the muscle? Or, yeah. I mean, come on, guys, take a look at this. Mm -hmm. You don't work out every day. Nah. You don't work out for three, four hours a time out of a day. Uh, but when you go in there, you're always focused on what? Quality? Over concentration? Quantity, over quantity. Focus? Over quantity. Form? Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> so is the next exercise also isolation? Or are you going to uh, switch up to biceps? I mean, it's a big arm day. It's so a big arm day. It's a lot of yeah, work to be done. You know, okay. it's a whole combo. Like, uh, it comes in sessions. So basically, it comes in three sections. We have the long head, we have the medium, and we have the lateral head as well. So this is more like a one over three of it. Okay. So uh, all I do is, each routine of whatever I'm doing, especially like being the tricep right now, I'm trying to work on three different routines just on triceps. Okay, okay? let's see. Um, you know, one thing I really noticed here is he said if he's doing arms, even though he's doing biceps, triceps, the complete arm, he wants to fully exhaust the tricep <coughs> before he moves on to the next exercise. <coughs> so one tricep <coughs> exercise, two tricep <coughs> exercise, and another one. Fully exhausting that muscle and keeping the concentration Solely on the triceps. <clears throat> All right. How important is it? You didn't lock your arms mm -hmm. when you came down. It's mm -hmm. like you stopped before your arms really locked. Uh -huh. Like you didn't fully extend your arm. Like, is that how some people start feeling that pain in their elbow or injury or... Why don't you fully extend your arm all the way until it locks your elbow? Some of these things are not thermodynamic. It's simple. Like, if you think about it, I don't want to lose the tension, like, uh, of, like, my movement. Like, if I go this way, I lose it. You understand? So, once you keep it this way, you keep the muscle, like, fully engaged from the beginning to end. So, okay. it's the muscle engagement. I want to have the control from the beginning all the way to the end. So, you understand? The control. When I do this, like, trust me, even if it's, like, 90 kg, I can still have it that way. Wow. But try controlling a 90 kg from this angle. You can't do you it. You can't do it. Because <laughs> it's either pulling you or pushing you. But if you have it there, your muscles are resting. And that's why I don't try to go all the way and bring it out. So if you try really to want it, to work out yeah. your muscles and not yeah. your ego, yeah. keep the weight on the muscle the whole workout. Get to it. All right. You know, I've noticed a few things working out with what? Especially trainings. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you noticed how he just found the position that he pulls the bar to before he gets started. <coughs> he does this almost every time, even though he knows that spot. I think it's the connection he has with his muscles, knowing where that spot is and knowing not to exceed that so that he keeps attention on his muscles, both when he goes down and when he goes up. I mean, like you said, if you go up too far, I mean, I don't think your triceps are working anymore. So... He's really going to keep tuning in that mind to muscle connection every time he's doing the workout. <laughs> and that's one of the keys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, we're done with the first and second routine. Okay. Okay. So now we're moving on to the third one. All right. Which I like to do the extension from the back. So it's the cable extension overhead, though. Oh, okay. So they are all extensions. This is extension. This is extension. But this time we are taking it overhead extension now we get to target the long head as well so yeah straight into it we use the rope for that moving into the third tricep exercise he's already said it he's going to do the overhead extension okay you can see she's moving it downwards a bit this one the position is key you have to note that you can't have it all the way here you can't have it somewhere lower this is why you have to bring it just above like uh, your waist so this is what i do i bring it this way okay that's perfect it's not all the way there it's not here too it's just intermediate so this is what i do bring it here extend all right now we're targeting the long head it's a full extension i mean look at this guys notice he's really controlling the weight that he's extending he's not swaying his body he took one step he found the position with his waist 
His back and his legs haven't moved at all. It's only his arms that are working. And you can really start to see the engagement here in his triceps. You know, another key thing, he makes sure to go all the way behind his head. He doesn't cheat the workout. He's doing the full <laughs> extension Ooh. to really maximize the muscle burn. I yeah. mean, did it burn? Once you are in a good posture, like a boot position and everything, you have to feel it. It's a must, you have to feel it. If you're not feeling it, you're not working, okay? It doesn't have to. Yeah, we all know work smart, not work hard. Yeah, so how do you work smart without working hard? <laughs> Even though you're working smart and not hard, it's uh -huh. time to put some work in. We definitely the have to, of yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing I really see oftentimes when people are doing this, they start working out their shoulders instead because they want to jerk their upper body. So at that point, you're no longer working your triceps. If you notice here, he's stabilizing his shoulders. Although his elbow moves slightly, it's mainly his forearms to his elbow that does the work to make sure that the weight stays on his tricep and not on his shoulder. So let me ask you this. So I'm curious, if you're getting tired, like uh -huh. you're doing three sets of this. Yeah. So would you rather reduce the weight and uh. still be able to do the same number of reps? Uh-huh. Or Will you keep the weight the same, do lower reps because you are getting tired so the and the muscle is, is exhausted? Is it a progressive overload or something? Exactly. So, okay, if I'm doing ascending, which I talked about in the last previous post when we worked on shoulders. Okay. Okay, if I'm doing ascending order of a weight, this is what I do. Um, I keep adding weight, but I keep dropping like a reps. That's me ascending like order in that way. But if I'm doing my regular kind of routine, this is what I do. These are the four plates. One, two, three, four. I'm starting on a three for the first set. The second one, I'm moving to the plate four. Okay. The third one, because I'm getting tired already, I'm back to three again. So it's okay. like one, two, three. I don't know if you understand. Okay. I'm trying so to like make it visual. So it's like you ascend visual. with the weight, then yeah. you descend again. Yeah. But the point is you keep good form and yeah. you're making sure you do it right every time. So yeah. if the weight is too heavy, yeah. you don't feel mentally yeah. bad or you don't mentally beat yourself yeah. because you didn't do that same amount of weight. Yeah. You knew that you wanted to finish the exercise mm -hmm. you started doing mm -hmm. and you wanted to do it well. So I go back to one less, back to the first routine. I okay. mean, the first set. All right. So guys, pay attention closely here. I mean, really get close in and look at this. <laughs> Look at the tricep engagement. I mean, come closer, really look. You can really see the entire time that the tricep is fully engaged. It's never a point where you don't see the engagement on the tricep because like he said, he's keeping the tension. So basically, that was the top three. He had the isolation, he had the double, and he had the overhead. Like he said, three uh -huh. tricep exercises working all the different points of the tricep uh -huh. with a full exhaustion. Okay. So what's next? Is so it biceps? So moving on to the bicep. Let's go. All right. So let's go. So we went through three tricep exercises to mm -hmm. fully exhaust the tricep. I think now we're moving on the biceps, right? Yeah, the bicep. Okay. So talk to me about this. You know, it all comes down to so many different variations of curls uh -huh. for the most part. You uh -huh. have hammer curl. You uh -huh. have, you know, the barbell curl, yeah. dumbbell curls, yeah. cross body curls. Yeah. At the end of the day, put curl on the end of the exercise and uh -huh. it could be a bicep workout, I know. right? I know. So I'm just curious. What's the advantage or disadvantage of using dumbbells versus barbells when you're working out your biceps? I mean, either the barbell or the dumbbell, they all can be used for kills. The difference is, like, when it comes to the, um, the barbell, it gives you more leverage. Like, the fact that, like, when you're using the barbell, you don't get to sway a lot, even if you want to. You understand? You really you get to focus. You can't move that hand. So yeah. it prevents you more from swaying. But the advantage, I would say, the dumbbells have over the barbells is you get to do different variations with that. The isolations. You get to target direct, like, uh, muscle groups that you really want to. Either the outer, the inner, and any other else, like, stuff you want to isolate and work on. So yeah. you feel like you get the isolations. Like, yeah. and I noticed with triceps. Yeah. You wanted to start off with isolation yeah, first. Yeah, so yeah, is that the same that applies to bicep? It's the same that applies with bicep. But the bicep, it's a bit like a structured. I mean, structured a bit different. Okay. You understand? So how's because, the bicep muscle structure? Okay, go to, we're about to find out. First of all, we start with the bicep curl, the hammer routine. We have okay. the bicep curl this way, which is the traditional one, but the hammer goes that way. So we're starting off with the hammer curl. Okay, let's okay. get into it. So here it is, guys. You have the hammer curl. <laughs> Same way with the tricep, he prefers to isolate first when he's doing arms. 
As you can see, he's doing the hammer curl, but he's doing it individually on each arm. Take note of these few things. Although he's doing each arm individually, he's making sure not to sway his body back and forth like this. If you look at it, his shoulders pretty much stay in the same position throughout the entirety of the workout. And that's really important. If you're starting to sway your back, here's a quick tip. Either reduce the weight or you can find a wall to lean against. That way you really can't sway. But make sure if you want to work out your bicep, you can't sway. So this is the first routine. Uh, sorry about that. This is the first set of the first routine of the bicep curl, which is the hammer curl. Okay, um, I'll do five sets of this one. Five? Five different sets of the hammer curl. But this is how it goes. The first one was isolation. So okay. I got two sets of the isolation, which right. is like one at a time. I do two sets of that. Then the second one is okay. going to be a bit like uh, different. First one we just did goes for two sets. Then we change the pattern of what okay. we are doing. Okay? So you do the isolation for two sets and then yeah. you move on to the next yeah, version the of next it. The next version is going to be so let's get into ascending it. order. Yeah. So take a look. Let's do this. All right. So this is the ascending bicep hammer curl all right one one now he's gonna move the reps and ascend the number of reps he's doing on each arm every time so notice he's doing multiple reps on the same arm before he switches arms this is really giving him the isolation the full muscle exhaustion and now he's really starting to feel the hammer curl and where it's working in terms of that muscle connection with the bicep. Wow. I mean, the veins are really starting to come out. Like, whew. I have to ask you this. The way your veins were starting to pop out doing that one. Is the ascending like the trick to building biceps like this? Because... Uh, I mean, over this period of time, like I've been doing this, I think I've seen a significant amount of like a, a difference. You understand? And results in particular when it comes to me just doing the regular ones because the ascending keeps more pressure on the muscle this is the thing when i go one here it gets better when you're doing the hold while doing it okay. but we get into that gonna be the next version the next version but you're still on the basics though you okay understand? so you heard it here first guys it's not that you have to do so many exercises but knowing how to change the exercise and do different variations of it yeah. is going to give you a different level of exhaustion <laughs> to really build and exhaust that muscle completely. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's show them the, okay. the next variation with the holds that you were talking about. I want you guys to really notice this. He comes up, he holds it at the top just for a bit before slowly releasing. I mean, he keeps talking about muscle exhaustion. I think he will continue to do that because if you really want to build big arms, you have to really exhaust the muscle, all right? I mean, it's so many different variations you can do. So if you really want to stay tuned to building bigger Ooh. arms, it's consistency, week over week over week. It's different variations, uh -huh. time and time and time again. Notice some guys with big arms, they can't really stretch across their body or like grab their arms together uh -huh. backwards. Do you think you get less range of motion the bigger your biceps get? I think so. I think so, but it's all about mobility. I mean, it becomes a point where like your forearm is just hitting your own yeah. bicep. I keep saying it's all about mobility. Yeah. You have to learn how to incorporate like a mobility stuff too mm -hmm. into your workout. You don't have to just be lifting weights here and there. Yeah. You, understand? you know, so, you, you just spoke about mobility. Mm -hmm. I always notice this, whether you're doing arms or whatever body part, mm -hmm. you always make to stretch there. Is mm -hmm. that one of the keys to you getting that range of motion and that mobility? I don't play with that. It's true. This mobility, this range of motion, this stretching, this warm-up, uh -huh. it's not just for those in rehab. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important to prevent further injury. So, Absolutely. although he might have had an injury in one particular part of uh -huh. his body, uh -huh. you make sure to get that same mobility, that yeah. same stretch for the entire, for complete, the entire body. complete body. So, so, what's the second workout the for second biceps? Was, uh, I don't want to just move from dumbbell to dumbbell. Okay. So, right after the hammer curl, I move right into either the straight bar curl, Okay. Oh, the easy bar curl. Okay, okay. so let's get so into move it. Move on to the easy bar curl for today. The next time we get to show you the difference between the easy bar curl and the straight bar curl. But until then, let's move on to the easy bar curl. Let's get right into it. All right. I mean, he spoke so much about the difference between dumbbells and then using the barbell. 
if you notice this, you don't have any opportunity to sway your hands at all when you're holding the bar. And it's even more important that you make sure your back doesn't sway at all to keep that full tension on your bicep. You know, he spoke so much in this video so far about the range of motion. I mean, just look at the full stretch that he's getting with the easy bar curl. I want you to notice, he's not just taking the bar curl and just moving so fast. It's not about how fast you do the reps, it's about how good you do the reps, all right? I like the ending. It's all about the exhaustion, but how do you get the exhaustion? It's not like about the time and the tension, the eccentric, the control that you bring it all the way down, slower. And every rep must count. So, so I want you guys to pay attention to this as he goes into the second set. He spoke so much about the eccentric, about the control. It's so important, all right? So watch this. One, one thousand, two. Three. It takes almost three seconds for him to do a full rep, all right? So if he's doing 10 reps, that can easily be a 30 second workout just for one set, all right? And you can tell, look at his face. It's not that easy, but he's maintaining the control and that is everything when you're doing this workout. Wow. <laughs> You know, you just spoke so much about maintaining versus when you were working out that body part every single day. Uh -huh. We said this to you guys at the beginning. This is an exclusive limited series, so I hope you're listening to this. Mm -hmm. One key thing that really sets apart his training program and why he sees so much results with his clients is he really knows the difference between a building muscle phase mm -hmm. and a maintaining phase. Mm -hmm. It's not realistic for your body to be in a building muscle phase 100% of the time yeah. for a year straight. I mean, you have to maintain. Recovery is equally as important. Would you agree? The maintenance is everything. Um, it's one thing even getting like a muscular, especially having a bigger arm or shoulder or chest. It can be any body part, legs. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing trying to maintain that. It's yeah. very hard because it's like you can realistically you can get something for over two, three years, like worth of like a work being put in. Then uh, then you don't show up in the gym for like a week or two, then you feel like you've lost it all. You understand? Yeah. So mentally or psychologically, it's something that I don't know if it's with all bodybuilders. You feel like if you don't show up for a week or two or if you don't work on that body part for a week or two. It's like you're losing it. I was really, really like consistent of working on arms. Yeah. It used to be Monday to Friday. Like <laughs> Just like Monday I said, every guy in the gym. Every day. You know what? Arms in the gym. It doesn't matter. It got matter. to a point, they used to even call me like arms master, like back in wow. school. Trust wow, me, wow, 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 wow. Because that was all I did. Wow, wow, wow. Just arms. You know, yes, so I want us to talk about this right mm -hmm. here. And one of the key differences between this is when you're really building the muscle, you can work out that muscle three times in a week. So long as you have breaks in between for the mm -hmm. muscle to mm -hmm. fully recover, uh -huh. you'll really be able to continue building, recover, building, recover, even if you're working it out three times in a week. But once you get to a point where you've really hit the next milestone, you've built that muscle, uh -huh. and even if you want to continue growing, it's important to know when to transition into a maintenance phase. Maybe at that time, you're only working it out once, maximum twice a week, uh -huh. but it's enough for you to keep that muscle connection. He just said he doesn't work on arms that much, but guess what? He's able to maintain that muscle mass because he's in that maintenance phase where he's continuing to keep that muscle connection. So if you're really looking to build muscle and continue growing your physique, I mean, he's been building his physique for eight to 10 years, guys. Mm -hmm. But it comes with phases, a build, a recovery, a maintain. And knowing how to cycle through those phases is everything. So yeah, so um, all that being said, we're moving on to the next routine. Which is, this one is very technical, it's fully concentration. So take a look, we are going to take a seat with this one. Let's go with this. Moving into the stir routine, like he's already told you guys, it's very technical. But if you do this right, it can be used both in the maintaining of the muscle phase and the building muscle phase. So take a look at this from your expert, what? Okay, so this one we are doing the seated dumbbell curl. So okay. this, you go with that. It's isolation. You can't do both at once. People try to do this. I feel like it's all a cheat. Or oh, that doesn't make sense. Okay? This one is strictly isolation. The dumbbell is right in front of you this way. Just sit up right that way. Hands go straight all the way down. This way, try to 
keep it level from shoulder all the way to your wrist okay try to keep it straight right into it all right i want you guys to notice this one he places his elbow on the inside of his thigh when doing this exercise <laughs> two you have to find what really makes sense for your body you have to find that sweet spot so that you can get the muscle connection all right notice although he is doing a bicep curl his upper body is stable his legs are stable he's keeping the tension of the weight solely on his arm by pressing that elbow directly into the middle of your thigh you will find that you use that as a fulcrum point to put the force completely on your bicep i mean he's breathing really hard he's going ah, ah. like i said this workout is very technical but it could be used for both the maintaining and the muscle building phase if you do it correctly. I think this one, the reverse is much harder than you bring in. It's like uh, from the inside. So when you're telling, it's much easier. Wow. When you're reversing, because of the control mm -hmm. of like how slow you have to go like of a rep. Yeah, like it really takes a whole lot of like discipline for you to go through that. So let me ask you that. Mm -hmm. Is that where you really build uh -huh. the muscle mass in the bicep with this exercise? I think that's mainly one of the yeah. reasons I would say that. Most times it's like, uh, we keep saying this, it's not one thing or the other. It's a whole combo. Yeah. You just have to know how to like, you know, know what you're targeting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're targeting the out. Sometimes you're targeting the inner. You understand? Most times you're trying to do what? To go all the way and target the peak with the contraction. You understand? Right. So this one, because I go to go all the way, I think I'm targeting more like the peak. I've already done the outro and the intro. Okay. Wait. So unfortunately, we didn't get to talk about that, which will come. I'm talking about the easy. When you go yeah. the out, like, I mean, when you go open, you target Oh, come on. Come on, come on, it's an exclusive series. You can't okay. release too much about week two now. Uh, yeah, you're <laughs> That's going coming to, talk to about you in week okay. two arms. Don't yeah. worry. Uh, so I want you guys to really pay attention to this. You'll notice controlling that bicep extension as he goes down is so important, like he just said. You can see that the bicep on the inner, it fully elongates when he goes down. That gives you the full stretch of the muscle. One important part about building a muscle is you have to get that muscle to tear in order for it to get its strength back. That's why eating carbs and doing all these things is so important after you work out because you fully torn and stretched that muscle and now you're going to give it the fuel to be re-energized, to rebuild and to uh -huh. come back with more mass than you started with. And yes, don't forget to rest and always stay hydrated if she haven't mentioned that yet. Speaking of hydration, do you want some water? Yeah. I know that um, you haven't drunk water at all during this workout. I mean, look at the way he's sweating. My bad. I, this is something you have to really be doing. Yet we are expert, but sometimes because we are on set, we do forget to show you some stuff, okay? It's very important, as you said. You have to stay hydrated. Yes, just having had that on camera, but yeah, I've been hydrated. Like, I have been drinking water for some time now. They just haven't seen it. It's good you mention it so that they know that, yeah, you've been drinking water. Okay? Okay. So, um, I think this is where we come to the end. Yeah. I mean, uh, here you have it. Like mm -hmm. we said, it's an exclusive limited series. It's not about giving you everything mm -hmm. under the sun. Sometimes, okay. it's like going to a restaurant whose menu has a hundred pages. You don't want to read a book to just choose what to eat. When it comes to building your muscle, mm -hmm. you don't have to read an encyclopedia. Sometimes it's being consistent, it's mm -hmm. doing the same thing, but uh -huh. with different variations, and it's just about completely exhausting that muscle. So, and three for triceps, you, and three good biceps. For you, and good for you, you got to see all of that. We took you through a whole tricep routine, three solid ones. This is the basic, trust me. Anything else is extra. And we took you through a whole bicep routine as well. That's why you have that. This is fully muscles. It's okay. called a big arm day, guys. Yeah, I know. It was, it was called a big arm day for a reason. You have to go through a whole circle of whatever that you're doing. Later, we're going to show you isolations, a whole work on the tricep, a whole work on the bicep. But until then, stay tuned. If you want the next level, you have to start from the basics. Mm -hmm. No matter where he's working out, he's always going to do a basic routine. Okay. So stay tuned. We'll definitely bringing you more advanced exercises, advanced variations of the okay. same exercises, and more ways to fully exhaust and burn out your muscle so that you don't get bored and you continue building, maintaining, recovering, and growing. Until then. 
Don't forget to subscribe. Okay, stay tuned. See you next time.